So you probably learned in school about an experiment where Galileo dropped balls of different weights from the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Whether this actually occurred or not is a matter of debate. However, you were told that if he did drop two balls, one weighing, say, 10 pounds and one weighing one pound, simultaneously, that they would hit the ground at exactly the same time. Now, this may seem counterintuitive. The force of gravity between the Earth and a 10-pound ball would actually be 10 times stronger than the force of gravity between the Earth and a one-pound ball. So why doesn't the 10-pound ball fall faster? No doubt, you also learned that because of their mass, objects have something called inertia. Inertia causes objects at rest to resist being put into motion and for objects in motion to resist being accelerated. The reason that Galileo's experiment works is that while the force of gravity between the earth and the 10 pound ball is much stronger than the force of gravity between the earth and the 1 pound ball, the 10 pound ball also has more inertia than the lighter ball. These effects cancel each other in such a way that the balls fall at exactly the same rate. Physicists call this the equivalence principle. Einstein took the equivalence principle as fact. It is one of the main assumptions underlying his general theory of relativity. But those theories of everything that physicists today are working on, string theory, supersymmetry, and the like, well, nearly every one of them predicts a violation of the equivalence principle at some level. So it matters a great deal whether or not it is true. And because it is so important, scientists keep trying to test it. A basic demonstration of this principle was done on the moon in the absence of air resistance. An astronaut dropped a hammer and a feather and they hit the ground at exactly the same time, but this is not a very rigorous test of the principle. We have set up a much more sensitive test. We use an instrument called a torsion balance, which involves suspending a rod with different materials at each end from an extremely fine fiber. But the balance is sensitive only to forces acting in the horizontal direction, such as, say, the attraction due to the sun when it is near the horizon. What do we expect to see? Well, if the equivalence principle holds, the rod won't exhibit any motion corresponding to the position of the sun. However, if the equivalence principle is violated at some level, one material will appear to fall towards the sun more quickly than the other, resulting in a twist of the balance as the sun appears to move across the sky throughout the day. It is all very delicate. The balance is kept in an ultra-high vacuum. Position is monitored by an instrument capable of measuring angles 10 million times smaller than one degree. And we are looking for a departure from the equivalence principle that we know would be less than a few parts in 10 to the 13. It would be very small if it is there at all, but it would have enormous consequences. 